Hi, everyone. Uh, this is D3 with Drupal. Uh, can you all hear me good, I hope? So, um, so this is me. Uh, I'm a front-end developer. I come from a design background. Love design. Love baseball. Work at Media Current. Did someone say go sign? All right, there we go. Any other baseball fans? I know Ryan's a Met fan, I know that. What? Braves, okay. So, uh, yeah, baseball is a passion of mine. It's my Twitter handle. Um, and this is what we're we'll covering. Um, so it's, it's about using D3, which is a uh, JavaScript library for visualizing data. And um, so these are the things we're going to cover. Um, D3, the components are one of the main components, the graphic component is SVGs. Um, get into D3 syntax a little bit. There's a D3 module for Drupal 7, which is, which is pretty great. Uh, and any questions you may have. And I'll, I'll get into, um, when I get into the module, I'll kind of show some demonstrations of, of D3. So uh, D3 has nothing to do with Drupal. It's not, it, by itself, it uh, stands for data-driven documents. Um, as I said, it's a, uh, it's a JavaScript library. Um, and it's used for showing data in a compelling way. And that's the URL if you want to explore it more. Uh, very easy to remember. Um, and I just thought before I go any further, I, I mean, I don't know how familiar you all are with D3 or if you've used it or, or whatnot, but I just thought it would be helpful to show some examples. So, I mean, um, whoops. I'm just going to open up some. Uh, New York Times has done a lot with it um, on, on their website, and it's pretty awesome. I mean, as you can see, just uh, as a mapping tool, as a charting tool, uh, like I said, I mean, you can and you can show data like this over time. I mean, it's 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 amazing uh, what people are using it for. Um, and go back to that pres. And this is another cool one I found. So this is uh, showing every satellite actively orbiting Earth. So it's pulling actual live data, and it's showing the, the satellites and. I guess they're, you know, like their relative position. Um, and it's, it's organized by country. So um, a lot of blue in there for the U.S. Um, but as you can see, it's just the amount of data and, and, and just the complexity of it. It's pretty awesome. I mean, here's the key up here, so you can kind of see. But... And, then, and then you can also have, you know, um, you can have layers of data in there, too. So you can see, you can hover over these individual items and see what, you know, see what's what. So I just thought it would be helpful to, to kind of go through and, and show you a little bit of, of what it can do. Um, so it ha basically, D3 has a few components. The main one for the graphics is SVG, um, which is stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, which I think is kind of redundant. I think. Vector should mean scalable, but whatever. Um, it uses XML, and as a result, it can be styled with CSS, which is really cool. Uh, it has its own CSS uh, syntax, which we'll get into, um, and most modern browsers. If IE8 is, is uh, something you need to support, you're out of luck, but um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's pretty good. So. Um, and just further, uh, the, some of the, the, the elements of SVG, you have this uh, container, and it, it, the tag looks like that. Um, and then you can create objects. So like I said, it's, it's a graphic. So you can uh, generate uh, vector graphics with, with these things. So a rectangle, a circle, line, polygon. That's something called a polyline also. Um, and then you can actually position them within that SVG container. So you can set a height, width, for the SVG container and say, okay, I want this uh, rectangle to be positioned at X coordinate and Y coordinate, and, and it will work. And, um, and then one other thing that's interesting is you can um, also group objects with a tag called a G tag. So uh, within, and I'll, I'll show a little demo, but within uh, the, your SVG element, you can put a G tag around several different other elements and uh, group them and style them as a group. So I'll, I'll just kind of quickly 
go to that. So I just put together this little code pen. I mean, it's pretty simple, but uh, as you can see, as I said, there's, there's an SVG container tag. Uh, you have the circle. Um, I, I created a couple circles and a rectangle. Um, and uh, you can, hold on. So, so you, as you can see, I'm, I've put, um, the styles are in line here. So this is, you know, the circle saying CX, um, the R is the radius. So CX, CY are the, is telling you the coordinates. Uh, the the uh, syntax for the, for the styles is, is a little different from what you're used to. So it's stroke, stroke width, and fill for the colors. Uh, and um, yeah, and then for the rectangle, X and Y coordinates, height and width, uh, and stroke and fill is the same. And then you can, like I said, you can, um, you know, you can put your own CSS styles and apply and apply it to that. So I'll just quickly do that, just demonstrate. Sorry, it's hard to see. So yeah, so you can override the the, the inline styles with your CSS, which is nice. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and I wanted to just kind of quickly demonstrate what the G tag does. So for example, a little live demo action here. Uh, so I'm gonna put a G tag in there. And so this is, like I said, this is for grouping. And I'm gonna group the circle and the rectangle. And then with, with the G, I can, uh, I can style these as a group. So I can do uh, fill equals red, something like that. That should uh, change the color. Uh, maybe not. Um, why is that? Oh, you know, take this out. Should work. There we go. And I'll I'll, I'll comment this out because this this is overriding that the G tag. But so you can group things and style them as a, as a group. Uh, they don't have to be the same object. They can be different objects. You can, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. Like I said, you can, you can use this and I can reposition these circles, for example, like uh, this first one is at CX 100 CY. I'm gonna put it at 200. So you can see as you, you can move it around and those coordinates are relative to the SVG. So I've got this SVG, it's a thousand by thousand. I have that amount of space to work with for this. So this is like the building blocks for what, um, for, for D3. Uh, this is the main, one of the main components because you're gonna use these to generate the graphics that you're gonna use to chart and map and do whatever you want with it really, but uh, this is what, what we use for the data. So, uh, so the next thing I wanna just discuss a little bit is the syntax of D3. Um, as I said, it's a JavaScript library, and um, it's, in my mind, I mean, if you, have, if you all used uh, jQuery at all, it's, it's sort of similar to that. I mean, it's, it, you're, you're basically, the format here is, you're initializing as a D3, uh, um, you're initializing D3, then you're, you're making a selection, you're saying, take this out of the DOM, and I'm gonna do this with it. It's just, it, I don't know, I, I just, I really like the way that works. Um, so in this, in this, there's two methods here that, that I'm showing. So select all would select all divs within the DOM. Uh, select, you can select a specific div. Uh, you can use it for, you know, whatever you want, class, you know, P tag, whatever. Um, and you can, you know, you can apply styles to it that way. Um, you can actually, you can select, you know, a, a SVG element, like a rectangle or a circle or what have you. Um, so this is, this is, just the beginning of that. And um, here I'm showing you, uh, so you, you, you select the P tag and we're, we're appending a SVG. So we're actually, this is actually generating the SVG and it's applying attributes to it. So append this SVG to a paragraph and it's gonna be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. So that, that's, you're, you're starting to create your canvas. Um, And as far as data goes, uh, you, can, uh, you can use the following, XML, CSV, uh, 
tab separated values, TSV uh, and JSON, which is, seems to be the most common, commonly used, and, um, and XML HTTP requests, which, I mean, you can, you can do headless Drupal with this, or, you know, like RESTful kind of stuff with this. I, I, I haven't ventured into that, but it, it's, it's there. So this is just kind of showing the syntax. So again, initializing the D3. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the format, this is the source. So you would put your path here to your data source. Um, and then, and then you, can, you can do the rest. But this, this is showing, you know, if, if there's an error there, it throws an error at you. So um, yeah, so there's a module. And uh, it uh, it works with um, it works with views and it requires views and libraries. Uh, so you should know that right off the bat. Um, so getting started, you can link to D3 remotely, so that you can put that in in your uh, in your HTML or clone it all to your to your libraries and link to it there, uh, which is what I did. Um, so the module is, is, is here, it's just called D3, easy to remember. Um, like I said, it requires views and libraries. So you just download it, install it, just as you would any other. And, um, and download, like I said before, you download D3.js and put it in your libraries folder. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And, um, like I said, uh, you, well, you need, you need content first of all, so you need data that can be charted, so numerical data. And uh, you, you wanna create a view, I mean, I'm sure you've all done that. Um, and I'll, I'll walk you through what it looks like. Um, but it's important that you use field displays for those views. And um, the D3 module comes with four just out of the box, uh, uh, char charting tools, so uh, bar graph, uh, column, uh, pie chart, and line graph. And um, so I just wanted to, this is when I'm going to break off into the, uh, the, um, the Drupal side of things. So here's, here's my data. I just created a simple view here. Um, so it's baseball. We've got stats. Um, just you know, create create a simple table here showing um, name, birthplace, but the important data, of course, is are the numbers there at the end, and um, so we're just we're just listing those out. But you know, I, I would like to sh use D three to show this in a much more compelling way. Like, how can I you know how can I show those numbers and like make it make it a little more exciting for the user? So I, I just want to show you I've got all my data in place. I've got um, stuff to work with, then I just need to go to the view. So, let's see. So this is the view. Um, and I'll just show you how I set it up. So, uh, format, once you install the D3 module, you can select D3 visualization uh, as a format. Um, the fields I've, I've, I've put here, so I've got, I've got on base percentage. I, I keep a label in there. Um, I, for, for my purposes, I want to see it out to three, uh, three decimal points. And same thing with slugging percentage. So I've got this, this out here. And, um, and then I've got a title for this. So this is this kind of, I'm, the way this is going to work is I'm going to group these two pieces of data for each title. So the title is is going to be the um, the player's name. So because that's the title of the node, right? So this is what it, this is what it looks like when you when you put it all together using the D3 module. So you've got um, like I said, it's you've got the x-axis and this is the title of the node, which is the player name. And um, I'm going to group these these values with that. Um, and I, I also, down here, I want to um, have a legend so that the users know, okay, this data, data represents on base percentage, so it's going to be color-coded. And the data below that is, you know, slugging. Um, so it's color-coded to match this. And as I said, there's four uh, possibilities that you can use, um, pie chart, line chart, line, uh, line graph, uh, column, column chart, 
I've created another one. I'll get into that in a second. But, uh, but out of the box, um, these, it looks something like this. So I'm going to go to the page. Baseball stats, sorry. I don't have any navigation on this site. So it looks like this, All right? Um, it's just, it's kind of boring though. I mean, I can't, I can, I could go in and change the color in the CSS if I wanted to. Uh, you know, it, it gives you these, um, these sort of primary colors, you've got red, blue, I think yellow's in there if, if, you, if I had other values in between each, but it, it's, it's kind of boring. Like I said, it, it's, it, it's very utilitarian. It, it's created, you know, not customized for a particular uh, statistic um, or number. Um, and then as you can see, it, it's got, so it, you know, I could go in here and I could just, you know, I could change the CSS and, and sl select the first one in a group is always going to be uh, dark gray, and the second one's going to be light gray, or something like that, or whatever colors I want. But, um, but that that that's uh, it's kind of plain out of the box, and and um, so I want to change that. And I would, uh, fortunately, I can I can do that um, with uh, by creating a, a separate library. So if I create a custom D3 library. Um, this is why you need the libraries module. In, in my libraries folder, I would create a folder, and this is for D3, my chart, and I, I would need to have the, um, the following files within that. So uh, the, the, the naming has to be consistent. So uh, D3, my chart, libraries.info, and I'll show you what all these files look like. My chart.css, if you wanna put uh, your own custom CSS in there, my chart.js, and a view settings file. Um, and I'll just show you what that looks like here. I don't know if it's going to be readable, but so this is the um, libraries.info file, and this is what tells you, uh, views that this uh, library exists and it, uh, it sets it up to use um, views output uh, with, uh, with D3. So, um, yeah, you, it's it's pretty straightforward, and you can I can I basically I just copied this out of the the module itself, so um, I'll show you what that looks like. So within the D three module, it's got a um, it's got a libraries folder, and these are the you know these are the main. Uh, Types and you, you can see it has all these um, all the same files in there. So I, I just use that as a starting point, and it's it's a good way to I think in my opinion to learn D three a little bit because I, I can I can go in and, and start and just kind of customize what's already in there, um, so, which is what I did in this particular example. So um, yeah, so this is just showing um, linking to the JS to the CSS. Um, there's some dependencies in there uh, that are part of the D3 library. And um, yeah, and this is just setting up the views data, uh, you know, fields into, into rows, et cetera, and then and legend. Um, so you can really, you can customize this however you want to. Uh, and so this is, the, this is the actual D3 code here. Um, it's, it's, you know, creating variables. And um, and then drawing uh, the SVGs based on those variables, and the CSS. I, I kept it kind of lean, but um, I put some some styles in here. Of course, you don't you know you don't have to do anything. You could put it in your theme folder if you wanted to. Um, yeah. So I'll just go back to that view and. Uh, So I've, I've created this thing, it's called column chart two. Um, apply that and save and hopefully, 
Hopefully everything's intact. So yeah, so I'll, I'll just show it to you in, in the context of the of the node. But um, so yeah, I, I I just wanted to customize this a little bit, make it a little bit more sophisticated colors, and and um, also uh, you know the numbers are a percentage out of, out of well out of one really, although slugging percentage could be four really because uh, it's it's total bases divided by you know at bats. So you could, if you hit a home run every at bat, it would be four, but no one ever does that. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to show it a, a, a more meaningful scale than what they were, uh, the original um, column chart was showing, and um, and that's got these nice little tool tips here, so showing the uh, the actual values, and then like I said, the legends are over, over here on the right, um, and and then the the data across the bottom here. Um, and then, you know, what's, what's nice too is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little live demo here. Hopefully this doesn't break anything. Last night I was playing around with this like 11 o'clock and uh, the view just, <laughs> it just, yeah, just every, all my data disappeared and I couldn't, I couldn't get it to, to show up again and uh, it was good, I needed a little cry. <laughs> so I'm gonna, so I, I mean, there's, there's cool things you can do, right? So I've got, I want to sort by slugging percentage. And I want to expose this to the user. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got these two sort criteria. And now cross your fingers, everybody. All right, cool. So right now it's sorted by last name. Because I've got an, I've got a field in there, so everything's alphabetical order by, by surname. Um, but the, this is why I love this module because with uh, views you can you know you can use views to your advantage and then um, apply the data. So I can sort by you know slugging percentage from low to high, uh, which I think is really awesome. I mean I, I think it's just it's cool that I can manipulate data like this. Um, and it's it's so easy to get started on and, and get involved with. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then I could I could even make it even more complex. So I could take I could do on base percentage too. Whoop! I didn't put the to expose that. So, apply. It's hard to tell, but I, I, that looks like it worked. It's data is a little, uh, it's very similar. But at any rate, yeah, you, you, you know, I can, I can uh, change the order, go back to name, that sort of thing. But yeah. So it's it's not you know this isn't the New York Times yet but I'm working on it right. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, I mean you can imagine you can you can do a, you can do a lot with this data and you can uh, manipulate it however you want with uh, with D3. So uh, final thing is you could actually do it without the module. I I, I don't know I, for me I'm not gonna. I'm not a hardcore coder, so it's 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 harder to, for me to to do something like this. But you could actually um, use your your views, exp, you know, export from views to. Um, I, I haven't used this module. I don't know if you're familiar with it, called Views Data Source. Apparently, it, it exports JSON. Um, I know the D8 views. Does D8 views export as? You can export as JSON, can't you? Yeah, you can export as the rest of the JSON. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with D8, it, I think it would be easier, which is important because there is no implementation of the the uh, the D8 uh, uh, D8 version of this module yet. So, um, and um, then um, what was I going to say? So yeah, you, or you could you could just use an external file. You could just have your own JSON file and uh, pull the data from that. You know, it's like a, just an array, really. And um, and then customize your D3 library and, and tie it into your data directly. 
And that's it. I don't know if, um, if you all have any questions or if you want to, uh, to look at anything further. I encourage you, you know what's great? Oh, sorry, just before. The, the cool thing about the site, the d3js.org site, is, so this is it here. Um, it's got like hundreds of examples. I think it's hundreds, maybe, maybe I'm overstating it. But, uh, it, you know, there, there's all kinds of possibilities here. And you can, you can kind of, so I can click on one of these and I can see how they've built, uh, this doesn't look right. Well, I can see how they built, because it has the code there, and I can, I can, yeah. Okay, so here's a, here's a cool chart, right? Uh, well, actually, that's not, sorry, bad example. Let me find a good one. Oh. Yeah, so like you can you can have a you know have a D three example and it'll it'll show you the the code here and you can just pull it you know you can just copy this um, and apply it to to a solution if you if you have a particular problem you're running into and you want to use something that someone's already done it's it's there's a lot of really cool examples on the D three JS site um, and it's all open. Sorry, you you had a question? Actually, yeah, I was kind of curious if there's. Uh like kind of like themes available for charts and different charts available that you can kind of pick from uh, to apply. Well, not so much themes, but um, but these these examples. I mean, I think is this kind of what you're thinking about? Actually, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it. it you know, the, the, there's a million ways you could go with this, like these maps. I mean, and. and uh, yeah, and, and all the all the I mean, it's it's all XML, so you, you can get all the data from uh, from these examples, which is which is really helpful. It's a it's a great way to learn too. And maps are available. Oh, good question. Let's see. I mean, I I, I think it generates the. I think this is generating, let's see, maybe not. I don't know where that, that's pulling in. Oh, this looks like a, there's another, uh, it's linking to another file here that is the map of the US. Um, hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, it should all be in there because it's, you know, it's all SVG, right? So um, I'm guessing, you know, depending on what, uh, what, you, what, what you're looking for. Here we go. Yeah, I don't see a link to the map in here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, any other questions? <coughs> Do you know any uh, like sites for like good um, like sports data? Oh, uh, yeah, New York Times has some awesome stuff. Let me, uh, what was that site I found? Um, they did one that was like, it was a history of like college football. Um, let's see. Here, this one's cool. So this is the history of college football conferences. And this may bore a lot of you, but it's taking a little while to load. It's a lot of data in this one. Oh boy.
Sorry. Well, you'll have to take my word for it. The New York Times has some really great uh, infographics there. Um, but uh, this is one example. I have no idea why it's running so slow. At any rate, um, yeah, the Times has been like kind of on the forefront uh, with, with D3. MTV uses it a lot. Um, i trying to think. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. So this is, yeah, this is wild. So it's showing each conference going back to 1965. And you can highlight, and it has this little tag showing which, you know, which uh, team was in the conference. And then as you, as you go up, it shows how they uh, gradually merge and become these super conferences here at the top. So from, from more conferences with fewer schools to Big, you know, these bigger giant mega conferences. So. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have, you know, like this was one that, that caught my eye just because it was, you know, it was, such a, it was just such a cool representation of data. Uh, but uh, yeah, Times does a lot with it. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any other specific examples about sports. But. Anyone else have questions? All right.